Alright, here's something I wanted to show you. <clears throat> this is a, a Campbell Husfield uh, compressor. It's 5 horsepower, uh, 25 gallon, or 20 gallon. And uh, I'm working on this for a guy. And the problem that he said it was having was that it would build up pressure to about 40 psi and just keep running. It wouldn't, uh, <clears throat> it wouldn't go any higher than that. The motor would be running. Uh, he couldn't find any leaks uh, of any sort. He replaced this valve right here, and he checked everywhere else along the pipe here and along this, you know, this cutout hose here for the uh, for the switch. He, he checked for leaks there. He couldn't find anything. Tank had no leaks, so he figured it was the rings, and he gave it to me to, you know, take a look at so I can you know, get it going for him. Well, it was the rings, I guess you could say. Here's why uh, Here's why I think this is the worst designed air compressor, or the worst designed machine that I've seen so far. Here's the pump. It's a 5 horsepower capacitor start motor. Here's the uh, compressor pump. It's, uh, it's oil-free. It's an oil-free compressor. It's got one main crank bearing there, it's permanently lubricated. And just look at the design and tell me you don't think this is just waiting for to go wrong. There's there's no real protection here. The only protection for this area is this little plastic cover here, which goes on on like this. And half the screws are missing for that. So what it is is it's a piston, the connecting rod is all one piece, um, and there's a little cylinder liner. Now here's those are, those two parts are brand new right there. I here I have the older parts right here. Your piston. I guess you can if you can call it a piston, it's kind of a piston and connecting rod all in one. And your little cylinder liner. Your cylinder. Now, you can see why it was b wasn't building up pressure. This little rubber ring here is all hard and stale, and it got a, it got pushed down by the pressure, I guess. See it in the sunlight there. It would it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be able to build up any more pressure. It ripped. You can't just re and you can't just replace this little rubber thing here. It's it's actually built into the piston, if, if you can see. It's built in. Now, the piston rides in the cylinder. Uh, it, it, it's on a slant. You can see it's on a slant in the cylinder right now. If I turn the crank, you see it goes down, slants the other way, and then comes back, so the cylinder's coming with it. Then it comes back up. It's the pit, the piston's rocking back and forth in the cylinder. Why why would you do that? That 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 doesn't make any sense to me. Is it, did they really save that much that much in aluminum uh, and in the manufacturing process to put in a wrist pin on the piston? Just redesign it a little bit. I don't know, I guess they were trying to really save as much as they could. The compressor's about 10 years old. Uh, I just think it's a horrible design. My compressor is smaller than this one. My, I only have a 12 gallon right now. My sear's right here. And that has a normal piston and normal rings. Two compression and one oil control, because it's an oil compressor. This thing here is, I don't, I don't even know what they were trying to do here. Apparently it works alright for him, but, uh, I would, I would, would not recommend buying this brand, Campbell Husfield. It took him forever to find parts for, actually it took me forever, because I was the one looking for the parts. So, uh, it's just a poor design. That's it for that.